Blog Talk Radio. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Walking This Way's Impact Voice. I'm your host, Freeman Jazz, broadcast you live once again from my hometown of Mobile, Alabama. I hope everybody having a great Saturday. Hope everybody joining the day. Everybody's feeling good, looking good, of course. I know here in the city of Mobile, it's extremely hot. It's always hot in Mobile. But I thank everybody for tuning in to the broadcast, where you may be on the line or where you may be listening. Well, you may be listening. I think thank y'all for taking time out, busy schedule to listen to today's broadcast. Um, we got a, we're gonna have a good um broadcast today. Something that's gonna help someone out today who may who may be a victim of sexual abuse, um, to lead to all types of turmoil in your life. And I have a vic- I have a young lady who was a victim of sexual abuse. She's a singer songwriter, um, Miss Q. Lachey McMillan, she's here on the airways. Welcome to Impact Voice. Hello. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of the broadcast once again. I know you opened up, the last time you was on, you opened up about your past of being sexual abuse um, as a child. I know a lot, I know we know sexual abuse takes place every day um, here in the United States, not just the United States, but all around the world. We know a lot of children are being affected about this type of act and we finna ready to get into this interview i know it's gonna help somebody this evening so my first question is going my first question is you mentioned that you were sexually abused as a child explain to the listeners uh when this abuse started um well just to clarify um for everybody who's listening so i was sexually abused i was molested by my father um and it started at three years old um and I'm not sure, like, because it was, you know, I was so young, so I'm not really sure the exact time frame, but I do know that it, you know, went on for a while. Wow, and I know that could be um, tough, especially on my, by your own father, um, who's supposed to protect you, love you, take care of you, and to right. be a victim of the, the heinous act. Um, my next question is, um, did you tell anyone about the abuse? Yeah, I did. I actually um, opened up to, well, I want to say it was my daycare, the daycare that I was attending at the time when I was three. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not that I just, like, um, just kind of opened up to them and told them about it. I was exhibiting certain um, behaviors um, that was like a, you know, a sure sign that I was being messed with or something was happening, you know, to me. So that's how it really came out. Um, they noticed mm-hmm. it. Of course, they notified my mom, and it went from there. So, other than that, I never really, you know, talked to my mom about it or anything. It just, you know, was something that the daycare um, workers noticed, and that's super important. Um, you know, for people who get into like daycares and teaching and stuff like that, to pay attention to your students and you know the the things that they're doing, because you could really, you know, help help certain situations at home where the child is not able to talk to their parents or, you know, people close to them, maybe they're able to talk to their teachers and, you know, get help and kind of put a stop to that. Because it happens, like you said, a lot um, mm-hmm. everywhere. And you want to, yeah. So, yeah, my daycare. Oh, yeah. And it does. It really does happen a lot because we see it every day um, from mm-hmm. sex trafficking. Um, this stuff, it's it, it been going on, so there's no new under the sun. Uh, about mm-hmm. the situation at hand because I remember when I was growing up, it was this young lady who I went to um, head start with, and she used to always put her hands um, in my pants every time during nap time. I never knew why she did that, but it may mm-hmm. explain that it was something taking place in her life that led right. her to do me like that around nap time. But I never told anybody because I didn't know how to explain it to anybody. But right. it, it's a top behavior. 
for sure. So yeah, something probably was going on with her. <laughs> yeah. And my next question is, how did you handle your um relationships with other men that you did not did they not know what happened to you in your past life? Because I know by you being a victim by another male, I mean I know it may cause friction with other men who may come into your life. Oh yeah, for sure. Um it's it's never an easy thing. Um and whenever I'm getting to know like say if I'm dating somebody, I kinda have to decipher whether or not this relationship is serious enough for me to open up because I hate to like disclose that information and it's, you know what I'm saying, not something that's gonna be long term or whatever. Um but once I do realize or kind of make the decision that I'm going to be serious with this person, then I'll, you know, disclose the information. And it's never, I'm not going to lie, it's never easy. Um, and I kind of feel like a lot of men are, like, ill-equipped to deal with that type of information. You know what I'm saying? They don't really know how to handle it. So it's been kind of difficult. Um, just with going through that alone, it's kind of hard to trust men again you know like well even in, depending on whatever type of abuse you endure like because you have a lot of females that get molested by females you know what i'm saying when they're young so it's just like whatever you know whoever violated you of course you're going to kind of look at whoever that you know that stereotype or whoever that person is you kind of look at that group of people like a certain way um so it's, it's it was definitely difficult like trying to date and all that type of stuff so you just kind of have to over time, as you heal, you learn to kind of let the let the guard down and just trust again. But it's, it's definitely not been easy <laughs> at all. But. Yeah, I can imagine because that's that's like something that you just don't get over overnight because you was violated by no, 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 no. somebody that you know was someone who to, who brought you into the world, you know, helped bring you to the world. Um, supposed right. to take care of you, raise you, and to be a victim of that mentality. And um, like I said, I know you have to be careful and be wise. There's a lot of stuff goes on um, dealing with that. And um, I know you mentioned on the last broadcast, you uh, it led you to depression. Um, mm -hmm. How did you deal with depression and how did you overcome it? Um, well, first I want to say that I don't feel like I've all the way 100% overcome depression. It's something that uh, I want a lot of people to understand, like, when you do go through depression or suffer from depression, anxiety, bipolar, all those type of things, you never really, like, I don't want to say you never overcome it, but it's it's like a day-to-day -day thing. You have to literally wake up every day and tackle that every single day. And it gets easier, of course, when you have the right tools to, to deal with it or if you're on, you know, if you've been prescribed medication and you take that medication or whatever, you know, whatever you need to do to keep it under control, I feel like that's the best thing. But um. As far as um, you said, how did I overcome it? What was the first thing you asked? No, I was asked, how did you overcome it? Over, overcome, because I know depression is a very serious aspect. And I know a lot of people deal with depression. And I know some people mm -hmm. don't recover from depression. Right. Right. Um, I just get through it day by day by making a choice every day that I wake up. I make a choice that is not going to it's not going to, like, control me. You have to make that choice, though. It's definitely a choice. Like, if you if you let it, it will overcome you. Like, it will take over your life and every aspect of your life. But when, once you get in your mind that you're in control of the situation and this, whatever the mental illness is, will not control you, then your days will get easier. You know, it's always going to be certain things. Like, every, every person, every human being on this earth, experiences different emotions and sadness being included in that but depression is like a deeper level um and i feel like i kind of fell into that because of the abuse i i isolated myself a lot i was like to myself a lot i didn't really i was super quiet like as an adult i'm very vocal people know me as being very outgoing um i can really walk up to anybody to start a conversation but as a child i was not like that because of the abuse it because it shames you it makes you feel like you're dirty or like you know like you can't really speak on things and you know you just you hide mm -hmm. that you kind of close yourself in so i feel like that's where the depression started because it's like i had to kind of even as a young child three four five at that age i had to deal with emotions that you know most adults can't even process and i had to kind of process that alone and that's where i began to like shut down and just 
any type of sadness just was like to the max. You know what I'm saying? So, um, mm-hmm. as far as like how am I was dealing with it and overcoming it, though, it's just making a choice. That's simply all it is: making a choice and just being around people. Like I said on the last interview, people that um are positive and you know keep you in good spirits. And if you have a relationship with God, that is definitely <laughs> I would say that because. That's where mm-hmm. you're gonna draw your strength from when you don't when you when your cup cup is empty. You know what I'm saying? Who else do you pull from? Um, so yeah, you just you just have to make that choice. So you choose to be happy. You choose not to let this depression overtake you, and you choose to be happy. That's it. And I totally agree with you. Like you said, it's all about choices. And um, I know with God, all things are possible. Of course, we know that mm-hmm. He is a way maker. You know, He could bring you out of any situation. And um, he can't really do that. All you have to do is trust him. I, I love what the scriptures say, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. And he shows you that because you're still here and you didn't, like, some people don't bounce back from it. You know, you got a lot of people who turn to drugs, alcohol, um, sex with different partners to escape that part of their lives. But he still mm-hmm. kept you here and you're here to share your story. And that's a, and that's a blessed thing because somebody needs to hear that. Mhm. Absolutely. And my Absolutely. And yeah, because somebody need to hear it. Somebody needs to hear because somebody may be going through it right now. We don't know, but you just never know what's going through somebody in somebody's household right now. And my next question is, you mentioned something you want to bring awareness um to mental health. So what statement um you want to bring to others to bring awareness um to mental health? We know we don't talk about mental health a lot. I know we. We we raise causes for cancer, things like that, but we never tackle uh, mental health aspects. So what awareness do you want to bring to our community uh, on on um, mental health? Um, like we touched on it a little bit on the last interview, just about, I feel like by us even having this conversation now is doing just a lot. Um, and even from our last interview, people were reaching out to me and, you know, thanking me for speaking on it. Um, and I don't have the greatest platform or the biggest platform, but the people that uh, I am reaching, I'm grateful for. What I would like to do, um, because I am an artist, I would like to, in the near future, put together like a showcase or some type of like something um, to where I donate like the proceeds to like a, a foundation or an organization that is, you know, affiliated with mental health and stuff like that and just really speak on it, might even write some songs about it. Like, I really want this to be, because it's such a, like, pivotal and monumental moment in my life or, or phase in my life um, where I'm coming to grips with, yeah, I have a mental illness. And you don't like to say that out loud. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what? Cause, you know, growing up, it just like I said, it was looked at as, like, taboo or, like, you were seriously, something was seriously wrong with you. And you know what I'm saying? Like, but mm-hmm. once you, like, you admit it to yourself, and it's a lot of people, I feel like by listening to these type of conversations, they're able to um, identify within themselves that, okay, well, I might be struggling with this as well, and I just didn't know it. Or, you know, because that's the worst thing that you can do is to, like, brush it off or suppress those feelings and not ever deal with it head on. Um, so hopefully people are um, just – kind of getting more comfortable with the conversation of mental health and mental illnesses um, and they're able to uh, identify it within themselves and their family or coworkers or children um, and they're able to get, you know, because there's a lot of people who, who um, have autistic kids. Um, autism is something that a lot of people don't know a lot about. They're not really sure what it means and stuff like that. So that's what I would like to do with my platform though. Like I said, the showcase and just different ways that I can incorporate what I do and my talent into you know, the, the message that I'm trying to get across. So I'm very, very excited about that, working on some things now. So hopefully in the near future you'll hear about it. You'll see it come to pass. So <laughs> hopefully. Mm-hmm. Oh, it will. I, I, I'm a firm believer. You speak those things to be the they were because, you know, death might have the power of You speak those things in existence and will come to pass. I do believe that. And like I said, with your um your your determination, your your drive, um and you're 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 constantly busy and I wouldn't even know you were dealing with that until you brought it up. You never know any, you never right. know what a person's going through until you bring it up. And I'm glad you brought that because somebody need to hear that today. Um because I know that could be tough on a child, whether it's male or female. And I know you are um, a single mother, and I know you're very cautious of bringing. You don't want to bring all types of meals around your son because you got to watch those type of um, mindset too. So, what advice will you tell a single mother who's dating 
to be, you know, in that that arena of life brings one around your children. A single mother who's dealing with mental illnesses? Or yeah, dealing with de- just single mother, period, dealing with that. Because I know a lot of single mothers are very conscious about who they bring their children around with the with so much craziness going on when it comes oh, to yeah. our children. Yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard. It's so difficult because I'm still trying to figure that out too. My son is he's three, about to be four in October. So I haven't really, I've dated, but like you said, I'm super, super, super cautious, of, you know, like about who comes around him and the energies that they're going to bring and all of that. So I think you just have to take your time and really feel the person out uh, to a certain extent before you even consider bringing them around your children. I know a lot of people, you know, no judgment, but they don't really think, you know, that deep into it. And like you said, it's a lot of craziness going on. You know, people leaving their kids with anybody. Like, I don't have time <laughs> for that because I don't, I, uh-uh. Obviously, I've been through sexual abuse. That's, that was always my biggest fear, um, you know, with having a child was like, oh, well, I hope, you know, when I have kids one day, like, they won't go through this, but then it's so much, like, it's so many other things that they can endure, so as a mom, you know, you never get rid of that, that worry and feeling, um, ever, I don't think that ever goes away, but I I just would say be cautious and, and try to get to know the person as best as you can, now, a lot of people, I know this is, like, easier said than done, because a lot of people like to, you know, put their best foot forward, so it's like sometimes you don't know who the person is until it's too late. They already been in your house, like you know what I'm saying. But I would just say pray, mm-hmm. pray on it. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, you know, just try to find like a good father figure and just all around amazing person to be in me and my son's life. I just pray on it, and I just feel like once you meet a person, you kind of just, you know, you pick up on that vibe. Like, okay, well maybe not. And you know, a lot of times it's like we <laughs> like the guy, but the guy's not gonna be a good father figure. You see what I'm saying? So it's like mm-hmm. that conflicting thing. And I want a lot of young parents, and not even if you're young, but just single mothers, just take that into account, too. Just because he's good with you doesn't mean he's going to be good with your children or your daughters. Just you have little girls and stuff like that. Like, you just have to be cautious and pray on it. Use discernment with people and, you know, little by little, you know, introduce them and stuff like that. But I still haven't even got to that point because I just, <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm praying on it. Hopefully somebody come one day. You know, God got to about fear about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely, and I'm glad. You know, what I'm saying, elaborating, talk about this. I know we had you no know, discuss the thing we were gonna be talking about, and you know, and uh, cause this is a good conversation, and it's very mm-hmm. uh, helpful to a lot of people. Cause I read a lot of reports, especially you got pedophiles who target single mothers, and they yeah. feel like, oh, I, I need a father figure for my child, since my young, young boys, so they don't think anything through. So the guy comes in. And if you you have to watch, if you see a man very taking a liking to your son so much, I mean, just be cautious, cautious of that because, like I said, you got some pedophiles out here, man. That that's oh, about yeah. taking our young boys from us. So be mindful of that. I read reports on that all the time. Mhm. A lot of times, just like with the mental illness, pedophilia and pedophiles, they don't have a face either. You know, we always like back. I don't know, like back in the day, I felt like we had this image of what a pedophile looked like. He was a creepy guy, was it, like driving in a white van, you know what I'm saying? People make jokes about mm-hmm. it and yeah. like that, but no, they don't, they don't look a particular way. You know, we read it all the time, like these ministers, and it's like priests and um, high school teachers and coaches messing with the boys and stuff too, so that's another thing, you know, like that's the reason why I never wanted to have daughters, because I was so afraid of the sexual abuse, not to come to find out, like it's actually almost just as common with boys as well so you just have to be cautious all around you you know you just really 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 do just take your time people you know our generation we rush so much especially with relationships we do and we got social media everything is like snap of a finger okay we meet okay day three we finna get married like you know what i'm saying everybody moves so fast <laughs> but especially when you have kids it's a whole different ball game it's a whole different ball game so you have to just kind of take your time and like i said really get to know the person and know their background too. A lot of times we don't like to ask about people's childhoods and stuff. That that needs to come up <laughs> in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Me knowing your favorite color yeah. is not doing enough for me at this point in my life. When I was sixteen, okay, that was cute. But now I'm pushing thirty. Ain't nobody got time. I need to know what you've been through so I can figure out what the patterns what patterns have you established and you know what I'm saying? What how are you gonna mm-hmm. be to help me and me help you? You see what I'm saying? So yeah. Right. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Like I said, because me, like I said, me being a single man, don't have any children, but I want to mm -hmm. have children one day, and I want to be able to get married. Uh, I was married before, never had any children, but I want to establish that part again in my life. But most important, I have a children of, of my own. I look forward to that. And you just have to be careful out here, ladies and gentlemen. If you're single, just be careful. Take your time. And I, I'm just be real on the show to the men. Don't think with the mm -hmm. wrong body part. If you think with the wrong body part, you get right. messed up every time. And I tell guys that all the time because my dad used to tell me and my brother that all the time that they would get you in the world of trouble. And to the ladies, I know we got a lot of single mothers out there. They got children. I need to be mindful of the type of man you want around your child. Just be mindful. Pray about it. Ask God to reveal this person to you. Have that spirit of discernment. That's very important. And um, it's a time and season for everything. And um, I know we got nine minutes left on the broadcast. I know, talk about your YouTube channel. It's one question. I used to, you mentioned something about a pastor on your one of your um, YouTube um, episodes. Explain that, how that all happened. What was it? About a pastor trying to talk to you. It was like on one of your YouTube channels. Oh. I'm just laughing because that story time is just so funny to me. But that was a real, real, real life thing. That was a true story. It happened when mm, I was like 20 or 21. I think it was back in 2014 when I was working at a clothing store. And sure enough, this pastor came in there. I didn't know he was a pastor, obviously, by first meeting him. Um, but he was like an older guy. He came into the place where I was working at and just was like trying to talk to me. And I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm on the clock. You know, so I'm just trying to brush him off. So we ended up talking on the phone, and this man literally was trying to proposition me for sex, like, on the phone. And I'm just like, he just it was so nonchalant and cool about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is something he do all the time. And I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> we can't. What, what are you talking about? And that just was really like, whoa. Like, it really, 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 like, took me back. Cause I was like, what is going on? He was like, yeah, he's a pastor at such and such church here and there. And he was like, I'm married, but you know, this is what I do, and I'm just like, oh, well, all right, that story time is still on my YouTube, I think I did it like, what was that, last year, maybe two years ago, but it's still on there, if you want to go check it out, it's it's hilarious, and that's very, very true, all of that, I didn't make up nothing, <laughs> they add nothing to it, but entertainment purposes, like, that was real life, real, real, real life, I had a couple instances like that, for real, to be honest, but that was like, it blew me because he's a pastor, and I grew up in church, you know what I'm saying, so I was like, that's what y'all doing out here in these streets? <laughs> and that's one thing I don't care for. And I believe, and that's one thing I I don't really care for. If you care, if you carry on that title of being a pastor, you have to have a certain standard by you. Especially if you married, not just a pastor, but yeah. being a married man. If you married, if you shouldn't be out here trying to cheat on your wife. I guarantee you, if you what? find out his wife was cheating on him. He be ready to kill somebody, and um, right. oh, yeah, so. yeah, I know, right? So marriage is very important. It's very important. If you're not ready for marriage, then don't do it. Just stay single. Right. You save everybody else's time. Um. So I know you have an album out, of course. Um. So explain to everybody about your album. Where can they get it from? And what can they expect out your album? I know we just, uh, just. Freestyling with the questions, so explain. Yeah, about, yeah, I know we can get a chance to talk about your album last time. Mm -hmm. Um, go ahead. Well, okay, so I have two projects out. I dropped one in which was my first project ever, it was uh, The Good, the Bad, the Ugly. That's on um, YouTube only. That was my first EP. Um, my second one I dropped last year in November, Black Friday. Um, that EP is entitled Trent. And that one is on all streaming platforms, so like Tidal, Spotify, it's on YouTube as well, um, Apple Music, Google Play, um, you know, just anywhere that you can stream music and purchase music, you can get trans um, on there. Um, and right now, I'm actually working on my last project. Um, I'm probably going to drop that at the end of the year as well, just like I did Trance last year. Um, but I want it to be really 90s inspired. Um, I'm a super huge 90s R&B fan. Um, everybody knows that <laughs> about me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just really kind of dedicating, um, you know, this next project to all the R&B lovers out there who really love real R&B music. Um, because I want to start transitioning to, like I said, songwriting and just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, writing songs. I, I'm really not too 
it was a point in my life when I was super, super um, hyped about being famous and, you know, being known and make sure everybody knew who I was. And it's just like, because I've gone through everything that I've experienced this year alone, um, it's just kind of really, not to say I wasn't humble before, but it's really took that, that appetite from me as far as like being famous. I'm not really, especially dealing with what I've been dealing with, like I'm not really too cool on just, you know what I'm saying, all the fame. I really just want to be able to have a super steady income for me and my son and just being able to write and do what I love um, and letting other people get the song and go out there and go on tour while I'm sitting at home with my son and <laughs> chilling. Um, mm-hmm. And it'll just be easier for me. Um, and I'm still doing, you know what I'm saying, I'm still getting my story out and somebody else is going to sing it. Not to say I won't sing anymore, but it takes a lot. A lot of people don't realize um, when you don't have a big label behind you or a big machine that's putting up all the money to do the videos and the promo, the marketing, the fashion, all that hair, makeup, all that type of stuff. Like when you're funding everything by yourself and I'm a single mom, I, mm-hmm. it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? At this point, it's a lot. Um, and things could change in the future. Uh, things might pick up and I have, you know, my fan base triples and I'm it, I'm able to make back what I put in. But you can easily spend like a thousand dollars on one song, if not more. Just you know, with the beats and the studio time, mixing, mastering, photo shoots, video shoots, all that type of stuff. All that, you know, it's it's a lot right now for me at this point. So I think that um, me um, just kind of facing my mental illness and depression and stuff that I've gone through, like this whole year, like I said, has been really big on self reflection and um, just kind of sitting myself down for <laughs> for a little minute um, so I can get myself together mentally and just be able to kind of like regroup. Um, so I have been writing. Mm-hmm. I never stop writing. Like I'm always writing. I, I literally probably write at least one song a day or I might work, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, or a verse here, a verse there. I'm always writing, always, 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 always writing. But um, yeah, so those two projects are out. Working on another one, you can be expecting that at the end of the year. And then I'm just going to transition to just writing for people and getting um my words and my lyrics out and let other artists kind of experience them because another thing too like writers will always be in demand in an industry like there's a lot of people who can sing their face off but they they lack the ability to write the songs or they might Mm -hmm. have um situations that they want to talk about but to be able to put it in you know lyric form it's, it's a challenge for them so i have to think about that too that's a gift that i do have the ability to write my feelings out and put them in song form and a God just so happens to bless me with the ability to sing as well. Um, but because of mm-hmm. how the industry is now, you know, it's not, you know, back in the day it was like, oh, I want to get signed. I want a record label. And it's like, you don't really need that now uh, with social media and everything. You're able to build your own brand and your own fan base. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of artists are really doing it independent and actually prefer to to be independent because they're, they're putting all their money in and if, if it goes well, they're able to make all of their money back. They don't have to cut mm-hmm. a big portion of their money that they're making to a big label. Um, but it is harder <laughs> because you're like, you know, you're doing everything by yourself. But I mean, that's just the cost of being an entrepreneur and working for yourself. You know, it's, it's a risk, you know, it's a risk. But yeah, so um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm working on it now. I will have a new song dropping. I don't want to say the date because we're still trying to secure the date. Uh, but very, very soon. Mm-hmm. Especially, uh, you can be expecting the next month. It'll be a new song that I'm dropping. Perfect for summer. Nice little fun, carefree vibe. Um, and then I, I don't know. I might put some more serious stuff um, on there, but I'm not sure. I'm just kind of, I'm like back and forth with it. One day I feel super, super like emotional and I want to write like, you know, just been in those type of feelings and the next day I'm like well I just want to be happy I don't want to talk about that today so I don't know it'll be just a mixture of everything definitely my music is always something that people can relate to though so no matter what the vibe is or what I'm talking about people can say okay well I'm into that too Mm -hmm, I like that so yeah I'm excited and um hope people go out and get it and support it because it's gonna be good you know Mm -hmm. awesome and I say keep doing keep pushing keep striving and we know consistency is the key. When you be consistent, things will pay off. I love what the scripture right. says, be faithful of a few things. He make you rule over many. So keep doing what you're doing. Right. And like you say, it's so many avenues now. A lot of people doing independent stuff because they say it's not the middleman, but and also on the rights to your music. And I know that's very right. important. On the rights to your music and have complete ownership. Um, we got 29 seconds left here on the show. Um, so Q, you have any final remarks you want to share with the people? We've got 23 seconds. 
Um, just thank you for tuning in. Um, if you feel like you're suffering with mental illness or you have been through sexual abuse, um, get help. Talk to somebody and get, you know, just just overcome that. Know that you can do it and anything you want to do in life, work hard for it, pray, and you can get it done. And I just want everybody to be blessed. Amen and amen. And I thank you once again too for being part of the broadcast. Um, I'm going. I already subscribed to the YouTube channel, so I will be checking out your um episode you have, Aaron, um on YouTube. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, keep striving, and I have and I have your back, and I do support you. Oh, thank you so much. I just want to thank you too. You're so awesome. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it. I really do, and I'm very thankful. Um, I want everybody to have a great weekend. I'll see y'all tomorrow at 5 o'clock. I will have um, Jason here at the same time. She's from Cincinnati, Alabama. She's going to be talking about the things she has going on. So, Oh, awesome. So we'll be back tomorrow at 5. So I want everybody to have a great weekend, and we'll see y'all next time. Till then, be blessed. Be prosperous. Bye-bye. <laughs>